All right, uh, this is lesson one, two, three on area as a product and sum. And also lesson one, two, four on describing the graph. All right, so uh, the first uh, set of notes uh, on area as a product and sum, uh, we're going to take an algebraic expression uh, and I'm going to show you what that would look like drawn out into the shape of a rectangle um, and see how that relates to the area. All right, so a lot of times we see uh, algebraic expressions and we don't think that they could actually be uh, physically represented using objects. So you might have seen this before using algebra tiles uh, in the previous course, which is pretty much the same thing. Um, all right, so in the example I'm using, uh, it's gonna be uh, this expression here, x squared uh, plus six x plus eight. Now, this is what we refer to as area as a sum. So, like I said earlier, most of the time we don't think this is, this is an area, but I'll show you with the algebra tiles. So, if I take x squared and I, and I create this physical square, right? It's an actual square, and inside is the area, right? We talked about this kind of before, that area is inside. So the inside has an area of x squared, and I have six x's. So you'll notice I've drawn out, I have six tiles that have an area of x inside. So now I have six X's and I also have a plus eight, which represents uh, a total of eight little areas. So you'll notice these tiny little squares each have a, an area of one inside of it. So together you'll notice I form this rectangle shape. Uh, and so we have all the areas inside I have my x squared, I have two x's plus four x's, that's six x, and I have eight x's. All right, so everything in these algebra tiles is represented here in this expression, x squared, x squared plus six x's plus eight. All right, so areas of sum means let's add up all these areas. All right, so if we add them all up, it's going to be a total of x squared plus 6x plus 8. So that's what we refer to as areas of sum. Um, so, oops, uh, this area of a, the area of the rectangle uh, then is the same as this expression, x squared plus 6x plus 8. All right, so, but oftentimes when I ask, ask people, what is area? Um, they say, well, base times height or length times width, right? When we talk about different shapes, um, it might change, right? But most people, the first thing they think of is a rectangle, um, or th that formula really comes from a rectangle or sometimes maybe even just a square. Um, but if I look at this picture that I've drawn out, and I don't focus on the inside, it's the area that's inside, but if I focus on the dimensions on the outside, then we could also write this area, uh, not just as a sum, but as a product, and then I'll show you. So because we know the area is x squared of this tile x squared, that must mean that the dimensions of that tile are x and x. So x times x gives you x squared. And the same thing with the other tiles. Oops. And the same thing with x, the tile that has an x, the dimensions are x and one. So x times one is the same thing as x. All right, so that applies to all these. And so, and also one times one gives you, oops, one times one gives you one. 
All right, so that means we know the dimensions. So at the bottom, the base, I have x, and I have 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's going to be x plus 4, right? So that's why I wrote that. So the, the base is going to be, the base is x plus 4. And then the height, we have x and we have 2. So we have x plus 2, All right? So it's not going to be 2x because we're not multiplying these numbers. We're just adding them together. So x plus 2 and x plus 4, we have our base and we have our height. All right, so if I look, look at that formula, base times height, and I replace the base with x plus 4, and I place, replace the height with x plus 2, then what I have now is the area written as a product. Right? I'm not asking you to multiply this out or do anything like that. We're just rewriting, right? So what we've done is we've represented this area at, in, in two different ways, right? So the area uh, of this expression can be written as a sum and as a product. So this is a, in summary, here's the original expression which is really area as a sum. And then here's the new expression, which is area as a product, right? They were the exact same tile picture, right? We were just looking inside and on, and then we went to look on the outside. So instead of adding all the terms inside, we're multiplying the dimensions on the outside and they would give us the exact same number. So if I plug in, a number for x, if I put a 4 in there, both of these equations are going to give me the same answer, right? The left and right side. Now, it gets a little tiresome to draw out all the tiles, so we like to use some tools. And one tool that we have is this model, this area model that we could use. And some of you might have seen this before in a previous course. Um, and so, I, and I put here to make this easier, and I think it really does make things easier. It makes harder problems easier. Um, the simplest problems, you probably could get away without using the model, but uh, definitely this is a good to, tool to use for more difficult problems. So in this area model, it's basically the same thing. I still have this, uh, it's, it's actually a square, but technically we could say it's a rectangle. Uh, and instead of drawing out a bunch of squares, we're just writing down how many are in there. So in this case, I have six X squares. And over here, I have nine X's. And over here, I have four X's. And over here, I have six X's. I don't need to see the actual pictures of the tiles. I just need to know how many are in there. And so if I know that the area is the inside, then remember the outside dimensions can help us get the area as well. So just like a kind of a multiplication table, if I multiply the dimensions 2x and 3x, that gives me 6x squared. 2x and 2 gives me 4x. And then 3 and 3x gives me 9x. And then the last one, 3 and 2 gives us 6. All right, so that's where all these numbers are coming from. And uh, over here, I have just kind of a summary of what that uh, means. The area as a sum would be everything inside. So those are the four terms. All I did was copy them. Uh, and those could be simplified, uh, combined like terms, 9x and 4x give us 13x. And then the outside dimensions 2x plus 3 and 3x plus 2, uh, we can multiply those and that would be the product. Right? So in the end, this is what I know is true. All right, so that's kind of a quick uh, run through of um, areas, uh, area as a sum and area as a product. Uh, we'll be using this tool often throughout the semester, uh, maybe beyond. Uh, and so we'll definitely practice more of this. So it's 
uh, don't worry if it's a little bit too much at the beginning. Uh, we'll see it again and again. All right. Uh, and then the last uh, lesson, uh, it's a little bit shorter, uh, but and it's also something you were technically have already seen before, and that is describing a graph. All right. So there are different types of graphs, and each one can be described with defining attributes. Uh, just like the different shapes we have seen. So just recently we talked about shapes. Uh, what define, like how do we know it's a square? Uh, what defines it to be a square? Uh, and then the square else, we said it has four equal sides and four equal angles. Those are defining attributes. Even though the square still has other attributes like a par parallel lines um, and diagonals are congruent. Right? There's a lot of attributes about a square but what are the defining ones? So when we talk about graphs, it's the same idea. All right, so on the side here, I've outlined um, some, some of the major attributes we try to focus on. So a graph may or may not have some of these things. Uh, and then for some of these things that it does have, we might want to be a little bit more specific. Uh, just like on shapes, we might want to specify how many right angles does it have. Um, so I have a couple examples. The first example uh, in this graph, I'm, I look at it and I try to see, uh, does it have any of these attributes? And so the first thing I think of is I see these dots. And what it looks like is it kind of looks like a straight line. So that tells me, oh, well, this is the shape, I could call it linear, right? Or even if you just said, oh, it kind of looks like a line, that is useful information. Now, but it's not a straight line, uh, it's dots, which tells me something about whether it's continuous or discrete. So continuous would be a, a line that goes um, like a traditional line and then discrete would be a bunch of points uh, that are not connected, but they head in the direction of a line. So when I see this, I say, okay, that's linear, but it's discrete. And I wanna know, is it increasing or is it decreasing? And in this case, it looks like it's going up, right? Uh, decreasing would be something headed in this direction down. Uh, so sometimes instead of saying increasing, we might just say it's positive. Positive, or if it goes down, it'll be negative. Uh, some key points that are good to mention. Does it have any x-intercepts? Does it have any y-intercepts? In this case, uh, it has both, and it they happen to be the same point. All right, so there's a few other things we could mention too. Um, domain and range, possibly. Uh, but for the most part, these are this is a good place to start with this graph. Um, on the second graph uh, that I have for us, it's, uh, so this one is a little bit, it looks curved, which in this case I could call this nonlinear, um, or if you want to just say it's curved as well, um, when we see this graph a little bit later, when we see this graph a little bit later in the course, uh, it'll have a more specific name. But for right now, we could just call it nonlinear. Um, it's decreasing negative because uh, I see it going in this negative direction, right? So it's going down, right? It keeps going down. All right, so, and continuous, you'll notice it's a connected uh, line. It's not a bunch of points that are not connected. X-intercept, X-intercept would be, this is the X-axis. Does it touch the X-axis? Yeah, it does. It does right here at zero, zero. And y-intercept would be, does it touch the y-axis? Well, that's the exact same point, right? Just like the previous example. On this one, I included the domain and range because this graph doesn't keep going, right? It could look like something like this. Um, so the question is, where does it begin and where does it end, right? So domain is how far does it go on the x-axis so the furthest 
since it the, oops, since the graph kind of stops here, the furthest x value is zero. So your x value is between zero and well, this graph kind of goes it goes down, but it goes to the right kind of forever. So it's headed towards infinity. So our x value is between zero and infinity. Your range represents how high and low the graph goes. So you'll notice uh, the graph doesn't touch the top part, right? And so, and it doesn't even touch this part as well, right? So the domain said, don't, it's not over here. The range says it's not over here. So this is uh, the highest point is zero that's the highest y value and and the lowest y value is going to be somewhere in negative infinity so this graph goes down but it's probably going to keep going down forever right, so that means this y value is going to be between zero and negative infinity all right so those are just two examples and we'll see a, um, some more later it'll come up in the homework uh, possibly in some other lessons uh, but just to kind of wrap up some of the attributes uh, is it a function or not this is something we're going to see later just because you could graph it doesn't mean it's a function uh, and so we'll see what a function means for us later uh, I talked about continuous and discrete domain and range is an old topic but I kind of went over it in poll number two or example number two x-intercepts and y-intercepts um, are two good things to look for. Does it have any? If so, what are they? And then asymptotes, we're going to see those a bit later, uh, possibly in the course. Uh, I won't talk about them too much right now. Uh, increasing and decreasing, is the graph going up or is the graph going down? And then line of symmetry, um, does the graph have any symmetry? So if I see like a parabola, like a graph like this, uh, it might have a line that goes down the middle that cuts it in half. That would be a line of symmetry, All right? And we'll see those, definitely see that later. All right, um, that's uh, it for now. And um, yeah, there you go.